Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Welcome back to semester 1 for the academic session 2020 and 2021. Today, you guys are enrolled into our class which is EBT333 Rubber Processing. For this course, there will be three lectures that will be teaching you throughout this, this semester. The first part will be covered by me, I R Dr. Muhammad Shahmi bin Morasidi. The second part will be covered by Encik Azri bin Ahmad. And the last part will be covered by Associate Professor Dr. Teh Pei Ling. Okay, first, let's go through this situation. Tell me, say Andrew, is the rubber compound more alchemy than science? Well, answer Debbie, it's more like a cake mix. You start with just the right blend of many ingredients, which are designed to be processed smoothly during the mixing and to take the correct shape into the mold when heat is applied. And then, you produce a satisfied customer when he eats it. So, maybe it is a blend of art and science, persists Andrew. Okay, first of all, based on this situation, you guys can see that rubber processing is much more similar like baking a cake. Okay, first of all, if you bake a cake, what do you do? Okay, first you have the ingredients. Let's say you have the flour, you have the eggs, you have the accent essence like the vanilla essence and then you have some let's say you have some fruits inside this is what we call as ingredient and then you mix it together and then you pour into a mold for example that if the cake is round in shape then you have to put into a round mold if you want a cake we have a square shape then you put into a square mold okay and then after you put it into a mold then you bake it into the oven okay and then after you bake the cake okay and then when the cake is cooked then you will have a good cake okay so rubber processing is much more similar like baking a cake okay so this is a process of baking a cake and the process of producing a rubber is much more similar why okay let's go through okay so first of all why rubber processing is important okay first Okay, we can see that there are many types of application or many items that are produced from rubber. For example, okay, you can see we have footwear, we have seals and gaskets, we have tires, we have water hose. Okay, much similarities that these items or applications or products are made from rubber base. Okay, and then we are the rubber material itself, okay, this product cannot be made. And then, even though you have the rubber materials, but you cannot turn it into the product, the rubber material is like useless to you guys. So, how do you turn these rubber materials into the end product? Okay, between these, okay, rubber materials and the end product, this is what we call as the processing. The processing is intended to change the rubber material into the product okay that's why rubber processing is very important okay and then rubber products manufacturer okay let's see okay for example there are many types of rubber products okay there are general goods there are industrial rubber goods footwear inner tubes tires latex goods okay for example, the latex good is a big portion that contribute from the rubber base. Okay, and then from the latex itself, there are condoms, there are catheters, there are latex tracks, others and glove. Okay, this is why rubber processing and rubber products are very important because it contribute much or, or it contribute more towards our daily life. Okay, and then we out these rubber materials or rubber products, okay, our daily life, okay, which is dependent on these items, are really, are really, are, are constrain us from using the materials and it will not help us to, do, during our daily, uh, throughout our, our, throughout of our days. For example, okay, let's say catheters, okay, why do catheters, most of the catheters are made from rubbers, okay, first because of its flexibility okay and then okay catheters also been used in many medic been used in medical fields 
okay and then condom itself okay why do why does condom made from rubber why does not it made from plastic okay and then glove itself why does glove made from rubbers and why doesn't glove made from plastic okay because each items are made from rubber because of its own properties that contribute from the rubber base okay and then malaysian rubber products have more than 100 1000 products okay from the latex goods towards the industrial rubber goods general rubber goods inner tubes footwear and tires okay my question my simple question is that do you guys ever hear tires which are not made from rubbers and why can they make tires and why don't they make tire from rubbers what i mean is that why don't they make tire from plastic or else from woods why do need they why do they need rubbers to make tires okay the answer is that because of the properties that contribute from the rubber base itself which is suitable for the tires okay and then malaysia is the number one exporter of an all natural rubber glove and nitric glove also rubber catheters okay and i believe that most of you have gone through your internships okay and then if you if you guys notice okay there are many rubber company or rubber manufacturer in malaysia such as top glove okay and then there's medicate in typing and for the rubber catheters there are also many company in malaysia and what i know that one of the company is situated in commuting typing which is teleflex medicals they make rubber catheters okay basically okay you have the rubber you want to turn it into a product and then how do you turn this rubber into the end product okay basically is is the rubber is turned into the product due to the processing of the rubber and which lead it to the end product okay inside the processing itself okay can we use the rubber without vulcanizing it and then what is the importance of vulcanization okay before we go deeper about vulcanization first you guys have to know how does vulcanization of rubber is being discovered is it being discovered by scientifically is it being discovered accidentally or is it not being discovered yet okay the answer is in my next slide okay let's have a look okay okay first of all charles good years in the year 18,000. okay charles good years was like a scientist he wants to create a rubber bag he joined a product which much left him into a rubber and then his nitric acid he made he he managed to make a rubber bag and then during a hot day okay the rubber tend to be sticky and then this is what his first failure and then he was able to protect rubber from heat by adding sulfur so vulcanization rubber literally move onwards okay so charles goodyear discover vulcanization okay accidentally so while he's working on a formulation of the rubber he he accidentally miss the rubber and he falls down and then the rubber he falls down and the rubber and the rubber was thrown on a stove okay during during the mixing of the the rubber with the sulfur itself okay he would notice that once heat was applied okay, the rubber doesn't started to melt okay this is when the vulcanization of rubber being discovered okay charles goodyear okay charles goodyear discover Charles Goodyear discovery of the vulcanization of rubber, a process that allows rubber to withstand heat and cold, revolutionized the rubber industry in the mid 
18,000 centuries. Couriers make chemical into rubber into raw rubber in pots and pans in makeshift laboratories that he set up in his wife's kitchen and also in debtors' prison, where he spent many nights for, fall, for failing to pay his creditors. While working on the Eagle Indian Rubber Company, Goodyear accidentally combined rubber and sulfur upon a hot stove. Much to, rubber, much to Goodyear's surprise, the rubber didn't melt, and when he raised the heat, it, it actually hardened. Okay, this is when Charles Goodyear discovered vulcanization. So, rubber component itself. The rubber compound was first developed by Goodyear and Hancock and is continued to develop as a new material and new variation of all ones appear in the market. Okay, so Goodyear and Hancock, this is the discover, this is the person that discovered the organization. Okay, and then the compounding of rubber. Okay, until now, the name of Goodyear and Hancock are still being used. For example, there are made, there are tires brand okay, after the name of Goodyear as well as Hancock. It starts with the it starts with the raw gum rubber supplied by the plantation owner as natural rubber, or by the petrochemical complex converting petroleum products such as ethylene, propylene, and butadiene into raw bales or chip of rubbery polymers such as EPDM, VR. SBR, NBR, or CR. And then it is shipped to the rubber processor who blend it with various ingredients. It is at this point that the rubber compoundant take over and all of its art and science is dedicated to modifying the rubber elastomer, changing it into a more useful material. Okay, so if the rubber is not being compounding, Sorry, if the rubber is not being compounded, okay, the rubber is useless. Because the properties, the good properties of rubber will eventually come out after compounding. Okay. The principle of rubber processing. Okay, first you have the raw rubber. Okay, and then you need to compound the rubber. After the rubber is being compound, then you will have the rubber product. It seems to be very simple, but between each step, they have another significant step. Okay, for example, before you can turn the raw rubber into the raw into the rubber compound, the raw rubber itself needs to be masticated and compounding. Okay. The masticated is the mastication process and the compounding is called as the compounding process. Okay, and then once you have the rubber compound, okay, then you need to take it and turn it into something useful or else what we call it as a rubber product. How do you turn this rubber compound into a rubber, co rubber product? First, you need to have a forming process. And then you need to organize the rubber so that it will become a very useful material or product. Processing is termed as the complete sequence used in the industry to convert raw rubber into a useful rubber product. Okay, so it just needs a three simple steps. First is the mixing. Second is the forming or shaping. Third is the vulcanizing. Okay, mixing. The compounding ingredients are mixed with the rubber and distributed in it as uniformly as possible. Second is the forming or shaping. The mixture is made to take the shape of the final rubber articles. Vulcanizing, heating the shape article to cause crossing to take place. So rubber product are made by just three simple steps mixing, shaping, and vulcanizing. Okay, let's see into detail what is the what's the mean of mixing. Okay, first mixing. What is the importance of mixing? Mixing is to obtain a uniform blend of all ingredients with good dispersion of ingredients. Second, 
to produce consistent batches which are uniform in viscosity and in degree dis dispersion. Okay, this is the main objective of mixing. Okay, and then in mixing itself, it has a mastication process. Mastication is performed to first to reduce the molecular weight, second is to reduce the viscosity, and third is to soften the raw rubber. Mastication process is able to increase the effectiveness of dispersion of compounding ingredients and make the processing process much more easier. The mastication is compulsory for natural rubber due to high molecular weight in nature. So, this is the importance of mastication process. And the mastication process itself needs to be done before comp compounding process. Why? Okay, the reason is already been discussed. First, to increase the effectiveness of dispersion. Okay, and then for natural rubber itself, Mastication is required or compulsory because of the high molecular weight in nature. Okay, let's have a look what mastication is. So basically, mastication is just a process that you throw the raw rubber throughout the raw mills. It will shear the rubber, okay, several times to make the rubber more softened. Okay, the soft rubber will help to disperse the ingredient uniformly when it being compounded. This is the importance of mastication. Okay, and then after masticate, okay, the rubber will go through compounding process. Compounding acts chemicals for vulcanization such, such as sulfur. Additives include fillers which add either to enhance the rubber's mechanical properties, which are called as reinforcing filler, or to extend the rubber to reduce the cost, which is non-reinforcing filler. I believe that you guys already know there are two types of filler. First is the reinforcing filler. Second is the non-reinforcing filler. Okay, the reinforcing filler are used to enhance the properties of the materials. And then for this rubber processing, okay, it will enhance the properties of rubber. But there are also another type of filler which is non-reinforcing filler. Do you guys ever ask questions to yourself? Why do we add this non-reinforcing filler? As it will not enhance the properties of the materials, but we still add this non-reinforcing filler. The answer is just simple. Adding non-reinforcing filler will help to reduce the cost. But how? Okay, for example, okay, you are trying to make a shoe one shoe okay and then to make a shoe you require 50 gram of rubber okay and then how do you decrease the weight of the rubber but at the same time you want to make a, a shoe i hope it, i hope you guys are clear what i am asking i what am i asking you guys okay let's say you have a shoe this shoe is weight around 50 gram. Okay, so when the shoe weight 50 gram, by means that you guys need 50 gram of raw rubber to make the shoe. Okay, and then the question is, how do you reduce this rubber? Okay, but at the same time, you are making a 50 gram of shoe. The answer is, is simple. Okay, you add a non-reinforcing filler. So, this non-reinforcing filler will replace a part of the rubber that has been removed. This is how it reduces the cost of the product. Okay, next, it is through compounding that specific rubber is designed to satisfy a given application in terms of properties, cost and processability. For example, okay, when you go to the 
petrol pump okay and then you saw a long hose connecting the petrol pump okay these hose are transporting fuels of petroleum from the tank okay to your car and then this hose is made from rubber what it mean by to alter the properties of the rubber that suit its application okay for example this type of rubber which uh which are uh, what call which which will be used okay in a place where it could create a flame okay chloro or fluoro type of rubber is being used for well, this is why cr chloroprene rubber okay is much more suitable to be used when it involved in environments that are fire hazard or it can lead to a fire because when you use a fluoro type of elements inside the rubber it will start to retard the flame so it difficult to be burnt or difficult to catch on fire okay compounding process can be divided into two stages to avoid premature vulcanization okay the first stage is master batch and then the second stage is vulcanizing agent during the master batch or as we call we call it as non vulcanizing agent carbon black and non carbon black and other non vulcanizing additive are combined with the raw rubber this is called as a master batch second is the second stage where we add the vulcanizing agent after stage 1 mixing have been completed and time for cooling have been allowed stage 2 is carried out which vulcanizing agent are added okay so what is the importance of having a master batch and a vulcanizing agent at in the second stage so master batch basically you add all other ingredient except for the vulcanizing agent okay so for example okay you have a company a rubber company you are making many type of products for example you are making shoes okay and then you are making uh you are making shoes you are making what what are the type of uh rubber products okay you are making eraser or else you are making a rubber mat okay okay so when you have this master batch okay for each type of products okay basically it will have some special agent added okay so master batch only consume of the general ingredients okay and then it is not being vulcanized yet so you have the chances to add other material after before the vulcanizing agent okay and then after you add the vulcanizing agent it start to cure then there's nothing or no processing allowed to be done because the rubber already been cured okay and then two raw mill or internal mixer are usually used for rubber compounding two type of mixing condition can be identified first is the distributive mixing second is the dispersive mixing so what is the difference between the distributive mixing and dispersive mixing okay so we have a diagram okay there are one all let's say we have, let's say this is the ingredient the, the sphere shape is the ingredient so the first picture shown that all ingredients are, are at one side and in a one portion okay and then the second show that the ingredients are in a small groups but all around the portions okay the second we can see that the ingredients are in just one side of the portion and then the last is show that the ingredients okay are all in the portion so let's see which one is poorly distributed and purely dispersed dispersed which one is well distributed and poorly dispersed and which one is poorly distributed and well dispersed which is well distributed and well dispersed confirm that you guys already know this is what we call as well distributed and well dispersed this one right ok 
Okay, let's see what is like this. Okay, first, this one, what we call it? Okay, this one is what we call as poorly distributed and poorly dispersed. So, it's poorly distributed, not dispersed well. Okay, and then it's not distributed very well. So, distribu distribution is when it cover all the area. Okay, disperse. Okay. Okay, this one. Okay, confirm you guys already know. This is what we call as well distributed and well dispersed. Okay, this one is poorly distributed and well dispersed. And then this is well distributed but poorly dispersed. Dispersed in Bahasa, Malay, Bahasa Melayu, we call it as selerakan. Okay? It, it doesn't cover all the places. Okay, so, why do we need rubber compounding? First, first is that the gum elastomer itself has a very limited usage. Okay, so can you guys use the raw rubber to turn it into product without going through the compounding? Second, because the raw rubber itself is mechanically weak. Third is because it swells significantly in liquids. So rubber, raw rubber swells significantly or in liquids. Third is it will not retain their shape after molding. So you cannot the shape after even though after you mold, you put the raw rubber, okay, it cannot retain the shape. Okay, this is the basic compound formula. Okay, so in each compounding of a rubber, you, of course, you need the raw gum elastomer, and then you need the sulfur, you need the zinc oxide, you need the stearic acid, okay, accelerator, antioxidant, filler, plasticizer, okay, and then each ingredient, okay, have its own specific functions, okay, and then, how do you calculate the ingredients? Okay, assuming we require 20 kg of mucronized rubber. Okay, so SMRL20, okay, yeah, it is PHR. What is PHR stand for? P part per 100 rubber. Okay, so you have 100, okay, over the total PHR, which is 160.15. And then you multiply by 20 kg. So it's equal to 12.49 kg. So throughout this for this compounding, okay, you will be used 12.49 kg of SMR. Oh, sorry, SMR. Okay, zinc oxide, the calculation is simple. The PHR used for this compound compound for zinc oxide is 5 PHR. So 5 is over 160.15 and then you multiply by 20 kg. So you have 0 0.2 kg. So 0 0.2 kg of the oxide will be used to compound based on this formulation. Okay, and then the raw material for rubber compounding, okay, so you will have many materials and ingredients. Okay, so the most important is, of course, the raw gum elastomer and then you will have the sulfur you will have the zinc oxide you have the stearic acid you will have the accelerator you will have the filler and then you will have the plasticizer okay so let's go through each of these items ingredients okay raw gum elastomer the most important and usually the first step in compounding is the selection of the base elastoma. So when you are planning to do, when you are planning to create a product, a rubber product, okay, the most important thing is to determine the rubber or the gum, the raw rubber itself. What type of rubber are you, uh, what type of rubber you are using? Okay, this is the key ingredient, the one which is actually cross-linked. On which depend on many of the properties of the final products. Okay, so this is the main element. Okay, and then there are many type of elastomer. 
you will have EPDM, you have CIRL, you have NR, SBR, CR, VR, ACM, CSM. Okay, basically each letter, okay, will contribute to a naming or classification of the rubber itself. Okay, let's see. This group have the Q itself. What does this mean? What does this M mean? What does this E mean? Okay. So, this is it's important for you guys to know these terms of rubber. Okay. So, let's see. What is BR? BR stands for butadiene rubber. CR stands for chloroprene rubber. IIR. Isobutadiene isoprene rubber. IR is isoprene rubber. NBR is acrononitrile butadiene rubber. HNBR is hydrogenated nitrile rubber. NR is natural rubber or isoprene rubber. SBR is tyrene butadiene rubbers or else we call it as polyacrylate rubber. ACM is ethylene acrylate rubber. AEM is chlorosulfonated polyethylene rubber or CSM. Okay. And then EPDM is ethylene chloro ethylene pro propylene diene rubber. Okay. EPM is ethylene propylene rubber. FPN is fluorocarbon rubbers. Okay. So FFKM is perfluorocarbon rubbers. VMQ is vinyl methyl silicon rubber. FMQ is fluorosilicon rubber. ECO is epichlorhydrin rubber. AU is polyester urethane. EU is polyether urethanes. YBPO is thermoplastic polyether ester. Okay, so basically, if you see, when we have the Q, okay, in the short name, okay, it will determine that this is a silicon type. Okay, so this is the classification of elastomer. The M stands for rubber having a saturated chain of the polymethylene and rubber having nitrogen in the polymer chain O, rubber having oxygen in the polymer chain Q is the rubber having silicon and oxygen in the polymer chain R, rubber having an unsaturated carbon chain T, rubber having sulfur in the polymer chain U, rubber having carbon, oxygen and nitrogen in the polymer chain Z, carbon Sorry, rubber having phosphorus and nitrogen in the polymer. Okay. okay, rubber of the R class having carboxylic acid group, which is COOH, in the polymer chain are identified by the prefix X, for example. Okay, so X, SBR is the carboxylic styrene butadiene rubber. X and BR is the carboxylic acrolinitrile butadiene rubber. And then for the thermoplastic, Okay, so R stands for the carboxylic groups and then for the thermoplastic elastomer are uh, identified by the letter Y. So YSBR, a block of copolymer of styrene and butadiene. YXBR, so we know that XBR, X is the carboxylic. Y is the thermoplastic. It's a block copolymer of styrene and butadiene co containing carboxylic acid in the polymer change. Okay, so B is the vulcanizing agent. Okay, so this is a very, very important ingredient in rubber compounding. Without the vulcanizing agent, what will happen? Okay, so vulcanizing agent are ingredients which must be present to cause chemical reaction resulting in cross-linking of elastomer molecules. Sulfur is by the far the most widely used vulcanizing agent. Selection of pure system, vulcanizing agent, and accelerator is the second to the elastomer most important task in compounding. So the first important thing is the raw material, which is the rubber. Second most important is the cure system, vulcanizing agent, and the accelerator. Why? Why do we say that cure system, vulcanizing agent, and accelerator is the second most important? And then why does these three items or three these three ingredients 
come together to be the second most important because the three items or three ingredients are each relies on each other okay table show how each popular types of sorry table below show each popular type of organizing agent and its use okay let's see okay there are many types of organizing agent we have sulfur we have organic peroxide we have metallic oxide we have organic amines and then we have phenolic resins okay and then each type of organizing agent are used for a certain or common use in the natural raw rubber base okay for example sulfur is much more suitable to be used in natural rubber isoprene sbr butyl butadiene epdm and natural rubber Organic peroxide is much more suitable to be used in urethane, silicon, chlorinated, polyethylene, cross-linked polyethylene, WEMAC, PVC, and nitrile. Meanwhile, for the metallic oxide, it must is much more suitable for neoprene, haplone, and thiocor. Okay, and then the organic amines are acrylic, fluorocarbon, epichlorine, and WEMAC. Okay, and the phenolic resin, okay, it's much more simple for the butyl rubber. Okay, so I think, okay, we stop uh, until the vulcanization agent. And then this is the class for this. Okay, and then we will continue for next one.